He is uh, one of the singers of the Eagles. Since yesterday, I heard from the Don Henley group to say, well, Don sings too. He's Glenn Fry who joins us here. How do I introduce you, though? What's the best way to introduce you? Oh, heck. Uh, you know, I liked what you, you know, pretty, you know, I do a lot of things. Okay. So it's, you know, it's, you can't just be one thing. But oh. really, really, I guess I, I would say I'm a songwriter. Are you a singer-songwriter? Remember, singer remember song, when that was a great oh, tribute? Oh, singer-songwriter. Like James Taylor, singer-songwriter. Yes, Jackson Brown. Singer, we don't have singer-songwriters singer that much today. Like Taylor Swift would be a singer-songwriter. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. And that's about it. Well, <laughs> no, I know. Jason Mraz, right? He's, yeah. Uh, you know, there's, you know, there's a few. What's the first hit song you wrote? Uh, I helped Jackson Brown finish Take It Easy. Now, didn't you live above Jackson? I lived above Jackson. That is correct. J.D. Souther and I lived in a smaller a small apartment. Jackson lived in a smaller apartment. Was this on the West Coast? No, this, yeah, in Echo Park. Oh, okay. In Echo Park. But did you guys know, like, Jackson Brown was a big deal. Yeah, he, had, he was further along than uh, any of us at that when we first met. Do you know when you've written a hit song? I think you know when you've written a good song. You know, and I think, if you know, that's... That's important. You know, it's so hard to, you know, I don't think you should ever work thinking about hit songs. I think a hit record is a byproduct of you having, you know, written a good song and then made a good record. But can you write, you know, different times, different struggles. You have, you know, artists will say, you know, I, I need to struggle to write a better song or I need to be artificially enhanced here. I need to be in the depths of, you know, wherever. Can you, can you write a better song when you're not happy? Oh, I don't know. Not necessarily. I don't, I don't believe any of that kind of stuff. You know, I think, uh, you know, the only thing you have to do is you have to write, and you have to write every day. So, so when I do write, I make sure I do it every day because then you have productive days, but you don't just, like, walk in after not doing it for six weeks and go, hey, I think I'll see what I can come up with. You know, you just have, you just have to... But I don't think you have to be miserable. I don't think you have to be. It's so funny, you know, when you see guys win on the PGA Tour, you always go, new baby or a divorce. This guy was really grinding on the back nine. <laughs> 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 you know, but uh, no, I don't, think that's, I don't think that's important. You just have to be clever. What's that's the, the missing ingredient. Clever. What's the first thing to go on a musician? Like we talk oh. about athletes, the first thing to go. Oh gosh, what I leaves know, you? I know, I know. It's uh, you know, I, you know. I would guess, I would guess, it's your hearing. <laughs> well, that you would, know, that would make you, sense. You know, you know what I'm saying. Like Pete Townsend, you know, yeah. you know, has lost most of his hearing. Yeah, but uh, do you have hearing damage from listening to Joe Walsh play? No, or? no, you do I not. Have, no, I have, I have a hearing problem that's got nothing to do with being in the music business, but. You know, I, yeah, I think I would say the hearing, you know. What and about the then, creative flow, the process there? Because you, you eventually dry up with songs, don't you? Well, you know, there's something about when you're 22 years old and you're sitting in Echo Park hunched over your acoustic guitar trying to figure out how to get a record deal, you know, or, or you know, how to, write a couple, how to write a couple more songs that'll help you get a record deal. That's a whole different mindset than sitting down to write songs after you sold 11 million albums. Yeah. You know, it's a very different experience. You know, it's a different experience. Or let's say when you're not struggling. You How know? would you do now if, if all of a sudden this group called the Eagles was coming up? What, how has music changed where, what it was in the 70s? Would well, you be on American Idol doing a thing or, you know? Yeah, you know, I, th I think the, the thing that's the, that I miss the most, I guess, is that it was a pretty simple equation back in the 70s for, for a young rock and roller. You tried to get make a good album. You tried to get your album tracks on FM radio. You tried to have a couple of singles pulled off your album that would get on AM radio. There was really not a lot of interviews, not a lot, you know, you would do, uh, you know, there were a couple of national interviews that you would do for radio. And there was three television shows. Maybe you went on one of those, but that was about it, you know, and, and uh, you didn't really have to worry about as much. Now it's, it's so much more multi-tentacled. Yeah. Uh, there's so many different ways that people get music. And, and well, if you were young and, and just hitting, cameras would be following you. 
You'd have TMZ. You'd have all these websites. They'd be knowing who you're dating, mm. touring with, drama, all of that stuff. Well, I think, you know, I think that's one of the big challenges now is, is the ability to sort of protect your identity. You know, when everybody knows everything about you, there's nothing left to imagine. You know, I mean, what is Bob Dylan hasn't talked to anybody in 17 years, but everybody, you know what I mean? It's sort of, so it opens, it opens up to, you know, imagination. And I, I think that's a very powerful ally for an artist. Talking to Glenn Fry, uh, one of the founders of the Eagles joining us, Dan Patrick show. Tougher to be married or in a band? Married. Hmm. Is it close? Well, you know, it, it, there are similarities. There are similarities. There's give and take. There's there's forgiveness. There's understanding. There's you know a lot a lot of that sort of acceptance. You know, I think I think that's very I think that's very similar. But you know. The band thing is something that happens when it happens, and it's done when it's done. Yeah, you're married, you got kids. That's going on twenty four seven, you know, for the rest of your life. Was there a moment when the Eagles, though, do you do you break up one day, or does it just sort of, it just sort of crumbling? Well, you know, if you saw the documentary, I did. You, you know, <laughs> there were a lot of there are a lot of factors that you know sort of had to pile up before ultimately it was just sort of, it was, we were done. We were done. I've often said, you know, we should have taken a vacation, not a 14 year vacation. We should have taken a one or two year vacation like the Stones would do or something and then come back and work. But we didn't know that at the time. Now, you know, we've been back together for, oh God, 21 years. We got back together in 94. It's now 2015. Whew, did that go by in a you know, that didn't take. And you're long. still going back out on tour. Well, yeah, we still have some unfinished business. You know, like I was telling you before, we want to go out and play some of the smaller markets, go visit Billings, Montana and Sioux Falls and Grand Forks and Boise and, you know, Bakersfield. How is life on the road different now? We sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever, it's pretty simple. <laughs> Do you ever wonder how you made it out alive? I always made it out. Here's what I, here's my theory. I loved music more than I loved anything else. I loved music more than I loved partying. And I think that was always in the back of my mind. You know, we were functioning party animals. Uh, you know, we never missed work. You know, we always showed up in relatively good shape. And, how crazy uh, did it get? Not, well, how, let's put it this way. Uh, we, weren't, we, weren't, we weren't the Stones, <laughs> but we weren't the Almond Bur I mean, the Osmond Brothers either. Okay. You know? So somewhere, you know, somewhere in between. Who tour, who'd you tour with, though, that was either good for you or bad for you? Uh, we started out, first people we opened up for was Jethro Tull, and they didn't say anything to us the whole tour. Did we, you ever look at Ian Anderson in the tights and go, come on? Every night. Yeah. <laughs> Every night. And the flute? Every night. Leaping Leotard. I know. We called him Leaping <laughs> Leotard. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, then we opened for Procol Harum, and that was a great bunch of guys. And we used to hang out with them after work, and we'd be in some Holiday Inn bar someplace, <laughs> and there'd be a piano, and Gary Booker would go over there, and they'd sing pub songs all night long. We had a really nice time touring with them. We opened for the Stones in 1975, and in fact, we, that's when we used to integrate Joe Walsh into our band and bring him out for the encores and stuff. They were always really nice to us, too. Uh, were they partying back then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody was. I think that's the, you know, that's what you have to understand, you know. It was like the people who were on Charlie's Angels were partying, you know. It's like it didn't matter, TV, radio, music, whatever. What kind of celebrities would come back then that that you socialized with oh because people go to the shows well you know we were good friends with jack nicholson you know back in the day uh you know uh, you know i don't remember too much about about all that <laughs> i'll tell you what i'll tell you what i do remember though is i remember when we played when hotel california was number one we played in new york and they had a huge party for us afterward and everybody came out to see us during the Hotel California tour. So here in New York, I got to meet Teddy Pendergrass, Paul Simon, uh, somebody who I, you know, admire acutely. Uh, you know, a lot of people like that. You know. Well, when we come back... Uh, and sports stars.
A lot of sports people will come out to see us, especially in New York. Okay, hold that thought because I want to talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about uh, sports. And, and um, Fritzy would like to sing if he could to you, Glenn. Since you're not singing, Fritzy is going to sing. If he's Fritzy, not, we heard, was that you in the warm-up? Uh, that was Singing a cappella? I tried. Yeah, I yeah, did the best yeah. I could. I'm, I'm a big fan, and uh, I would be honored to uh, this, get a couple of verses. this is your out. real job, right? This is the <laughs> 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 That is correct. All right, we'll continue with uh, Glenn Fry. <laughs> Fritzy goes a cappella. Fritzy goes, you belong. <laughs> you belong. Maybe, maybe we could do a, a small little duet there, Fritzy. That would be. Just a small one. That would be incredible. Yeah. Then you could we'll say, wait till we're off the air. <laughs> you, then you could say you sang with Glenn Fry. I love okay? that. All right. All right, we'll come back with Glenn.